This is a revision video about the GCSE chemistry topic of crude oil, hydrocarbons and alkanes, which comes up in Unit 7 of AQA GCSE Chemistry or Combined Science. By the end of this video you should be able to describe both the composition and formation of crude oil, define the terms hydrocarbon and alkane, draw and name the first four alkanes, and use the general formula to generate the molecular formula of an alkane. Crude oil is an unrefined fossil fuel. It's a finite resource, meaning we're using it up much faster than it's being produced, and one day quite soon it will run out. It's found in deposits deep underground, trapped in rocks and released by drilling. Crude oil was formed from the remains of ancient biomass, in other words, ancient living organisms that then died. Millions of years ago, as sea creatures died and sank to the bottom of the ocean, they were covered in sediment, which later hardened to rock. Under heat and pressure, their bodies transformed into the three fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas. Crude oil is a mixture of molecules called hydrocarbons, mainly of a class called alkanes. Hydrocarbons are compounds that contain hydrogen and carbon only, with no other elements present. Here are four substances. Based on that definition of a hydrocarbon, a compound that contains hydrogen and carbon only, pause the video and write down whether you think each substance is a hydrocarbon or not. Our first substance is a molecule called chloromethane, and although it's a compound and it does contain hydrogen and carbon, we also have that chlorine atom in there, so no, this isn't a hydrocarbon. Our second substance is a hydrogen molecule, so again this is not a hydrocarbon because it doesn't contain any carbon. Our third substance has carbon and hydrogen together in a box, but they're not bonded together so it isn't a compound, and therefore it's not a hydrocarbon either. Our final substance is methane, and this is a hydrocarbon because yes, it is a compound that only contains carbon and hydrogen. So we've said that this methane molecule is an example of a hydrocarbon, but we can split hydrocarbons into different types based on their chemistry, and methane is the first example of the alkanes. Alkanes are a homologous series. A homologous series is a group of chemicals that have similar chemical properties, so they respond in the same way when they react with oxygen, for instance. And the reason for this is because they have the same functional group, so their atoms are bonded in the same way as each other. And they also have the same general formula, which means when it comes to writing a molecular formula for them, they're all going to look pretty similar. Sometimes, to differentiate alkanes from other types of hydrocarbons, we might describe them as being saturated. The molecule here on the left is a saturated molecule called ethane, and when I say that it's saturated, what I mean is that each one of the carbon atoms in that molecule is making the maximum number of bonds it can to hydrogen. Carbon can make a maximum of four bonds, and each of these two carbon atoms have made four bonds, one to each other and another three to hydrogen. If we look at the molecule on the right, this one is called ethene, and this is an unsaturated molecule. And you can see that although each carbon is still making four bonds, the two carbon atoms have made two bonds between them. It's a double covalent bond. And so they aren't bonded to the maximum amount of hydrogen possible, and therefore it's not a saturated molecule. You need to be able to name and draw at least the first four alkanes, but this isn't as challenging as it sounds, because in each instance we're just going to have a chain of carbons in the centre with hydrogens around the outside, making sure that every carbon atom is making four bonds, including the ones to the other carbons. So we've already met methane, which is the first alkane, and also ethane, which is the second. So you can see here we have a chain of two carbon atoms and then hydrogens around the outside. Our third alkane is called propane, and again we have this chain of carbons in the centre and then hydrogens around the outside, and our fourth alkane is butane. Now, these prefixes, meth, eth, prop and bute, refer to the number of carbon atoms, so you'll be using them again for other classes of molecules, such as alkenes, and if you're doing triple science, then also carboxylic acids and alcohols too. It can be handy to have a little mnemonic to help you remember them, and I like to use most elephants prefer bacon. So most starts with M for methane, elephants starts with E for ethane, prefer starts with a PR to give you a double hint for that propane, and then bacon for butane. You also need to know something called the general formula for an alkane, which is basically a way of looking at the molecular formulae of all these different compounds and kind of seeing what the sequence is. So if we look at our propane molecule, we can see we have a chain of three carbons in the centre, and then we have three hydrogens on top and three hydrogens below. 
So that's twice as many hydrogens as we have carbons. So the first thing we need to bear in mind is that however many carbons we have, we're going to need to double it. And then of course, at either end of that chain, we need an extra hydrogen. So our general formula for any alkane is CnH2n plus 2. And what this means is that we could give you literally any number of carbons and you would be able to use this formula to work out the molecular formula. Say if we had 100 carbons, 100 is your n, and so to work out the number of hydrogens, we need 2n, so 2 lots of 100, which would be 200, plus 2, so 202. Let's practice this now. So let's say I want to know what the molecular formula will be of pentane, which is the alkane with five carbons. Five is my N, so I've got C5. And then to work out how many hydrogens there are going to be, I need to do 2N plus 2. So 2 times 5 plus 2 is going to be 12, and that tells me there must be 12 hydrogen atoms. So my molecular formula would be C5H12. Pause the video now and have a go at writing down the molecular formula for the next three molecules. With a bit of luck, you've managed to work out that it should be C7H16, C12H26, and C20H42. Now the next bit is a little bit trickier, but not too bad as long as you're happy with algebra. For these next four questions, we want to work out what the molecular formula will be, but we've been given the number of hydrogens rather than the number of carbons. So now we need to work backwards. If 46 is 2n plus 2, I can take away 2 from both sides, to get 44 is 2n, and then I can divide both sides by 2 to get 22 is n, and therefore my molecular formula will be C22H46. Pause the video and have a go at the last three on your own. That's a little bit trickier, but hopefully you've managed okay. So our molecular formula should be C24H50, C40H82, and C50H102. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found that a useful introduction to crude oil, hydrocarbons and alkanes. If you did find it useful then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC chemistry videos coming soon.